Good afternoon, good evening, hello, and all of that good stuff. We want to welcome you today to Wednesday in the Word here at St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. We thank God for all of you that have tuned in with us on today. Um, we are here with uh, at St. Paul where our, our pastor is Bishop Lawrence L. Kirby Sr. Uh, we bless God for our bishop and for our first lady, Dr. Renee Kirby, and for the entire St. Paul Missionary Baptist family, and to all of you who are joining us here for our Wednesday in the Word Bible study. Amen. I am Minister Kelly Scroggins Powell, an associate minister here at St. Paul, and I have the honor today of hosting our Bible study. Uh, we want to ask you to continue to pray for our bishop as he is recovering speedily. Amen. We thank God that he has been hearing and answering our prayer, and Bishop is doing well. We want to also ask you to continue to pray for those that are sick and those that are shut in. Um, there are those who have family members that they have lost, so they are grieving and in bereavement. So we want to continue to pray for those people as well. Amen. Uh, we just want to continue to pray for our community. Um, there is much to be prayed for, much to be prayed about, and we know that prayer changes things. Amen. 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 And so we have a couple of announcements. You know, um, we think it's socially responsible to remind us that uh, we want to continue to do our part to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Um, we, we all have a part to play. So let's please continue to wear a mask. Let's please continue to socially distance and to practice good hand washing um, techniques so that we can prevent the further spread of COVID-19. Those are just some small things that we can do to help save lives, amen? amen. And so we want to encourage you to do so. Also, we want to ask you to go ahead and share. Um, share this uh, Bible study. We know it's going to be a blessing to the hearers and even to those that will do the Word of God. Amen. So hit the share button for us. Amen. Amen. We have a couple of announcements. First of all, we want to let you know that the work of the ministry is continuing on. Amen. St. Paul Ministry, uh, St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church continues to be a blessing to people here and abroad. And so we want to ask you to continue to support the ministry with your tithes and with your offering. Uh, there are several ways that you can do that. You can go on the app, Givelify, and you can look for uh, Pastor and for First Lady Kirby. And when you see their faces, you know that you are on the St. Paul Racine uh, uh, donation location. And send in your donation online that way. You can also call our church at 632-1467 and um, somebody will pick up your donation for you. You can also drop it off on Sundays between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. here at the church. Someone will be here to receive your tithes and your offering. And lastly, but not least, for those of us that still like a snail mail, you can get a check or a money order and send it to our church at 1120 Center Street here at Racine 53403. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, we also have a couple other announcements. As we prepare for the holiday season, um, it is St. Paul's desire always to be a blessing to this community. So we are preparing to bless 50 families with full Thanksgiving baskets. And so we're asking the church members and even those of you in the community, if you would like to donate um, some staple products, we're looking for donations in the way of canned goods, green beans and corn, um, boxes of macaroni and cheese, instant mashed potatoes, also uh, the uh, stuffy mix. Uh, and so if you have any of those items, hams, turkeys, that you would like to donate to help us be a blessing to families, uh, we are asking you to please come to the church on Saturday, uh, Saturday, September, um, I'm sorry, Saturday, November 21st. We will be here at the church from 12 noon to 5 p.m. Come to the Grand Avenue location, um, knock on the door if you have to, and we will gladly come up to the door and to receive your donation. And so again, Saturday, September 21st, here at the church from 12 to 5, we are gonna be receiving donations to help uh, us be a blessing to those who have uh, need at this time of the year, amen? And then on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, we are going to be uh, distributing those 50 Thanksgiving baskets 
to families in this community. We will do so on a first come, first serve basis. So if you know a family in need, please ask them to contact the church. The number here is 632-1467. Um, they can call the church. They can also call Restoration Ministries if you have my number because we are working along with the church to do so. Uh, our number is 744-5362. You can send us inboxes. You know, uh, you can inbox me, text me. You can inbox our church. Um, just make sure that you let us know uh, if you have someone that is in need and let them know that on Tuesday we will be giving away those Thanksgiving baskets to help families during this time of need. Amen. 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 And so, again, we want to ask you to go ahead and share this Bible study as we get ready for Wednesday in the Word. Amen? All right. We are going to ask our Deacon Chuck if he would open us up in a word of prayer. Good evening, family, church family, and all those in the community that are joining in with us. Um, I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads as we uh, pray to our Lord. Father God, just thank you once again for thank this you. opportunity to come together to, to learn more about you, Lord. Yes, oh Father, we just thank you right now for sending your son to stand in the gap, Lord, to that we may have a relationship with yes, you, Lord. God. Um, Father, we thank you for, for an opportunity to just learn more about you, yes, to, yes, to draw closer to you, Lord. Yes, yes, um, Father, I just thank you for allowing Ke Kelly to bring this message, and I, I thank you for just being part of it and being able to hear it, Lord. Um, and Lord, I just ask that you just continue to use each and every one of us, Lord, so that, that we can go out and reach people and they can yes, learn to know you like we know you through us, Lord. Father, I thank you for our, our church family, Lord, and I just ask that you just continue to watch over them and, and yes, keep them safe, Lord. Yes, um, Father, I ask that you just watch over our community, Lord, um, as we're going through this, this COVID epidemic, Lord. And yes. Father, I just ask that you touch those that have been touched directly yes. and indirectly yes. by yes. this yes. disease, Lord. Yes. Yes. Just oh, lift them up and prop them up on yes. all sides, Lord. Yes. Yes. Father, I, I ask a special blessing for our bishop, Lord, and, and you, you continue to work and just make him able to come back shortly lord and just continue to just bless him so that he can continue to be a blessing to yes, to all of us lord father i thank you for just this opportunity to yes, give you the praise and the glory that you so deserve lord and especially in these trying times lord continue to watch over our family continue to watch over our country continue to watch over our community and, and let us all come together lord um you know, anything that, that's not of you, Lord, we just ask you right now to come and bind it all up, Lord, and, and, and just just get it out of here, Lord, because we know that anything that, that includes you will be fruitful and yes. successful, yes. Lord. So we yes. thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for our children and, and all the educators right now that are, that are watching over them and trying to teach during this time, Lord. And we say a special prayer for those people out there right now, Lord. And we ask that you just continue to keep them encouraged and continue to keep our children encouraged during yes, this trying Lord. times because I know it's hard. It, they're going through things that we've never had to go through, Lord, and, and we just ask that you just keep them close to you, Lord. Yes, yes. Father, um, last but not least, Lord, I just want to say thank you once again yes, for just being the almighty person that you are, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, thank you Lord. for the blessings that you have poured thank upon you. your people, thank Lord, and we just ask that you just continue yes, to Lord. keep us in your grace. Thank in you. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, we thank God. We count it a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord once again. Amen? Yes, amen. 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 And so we are going to get ready to get into this word. Today is Wednesday in the word. Amen. Amen. We are going to go to the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians. And we are going to go to uh, chapter number two. Amen. Amen. We thank God again, God, we know that the prayer has already gone forth, so we ask you just to come on in, oh God, and show up in this Bible study. Amen. 
part of our Bible study, we always try to get the interpretation. We always just want to understand what's going on in the text. And then we pray and ask the Lord to give us revelation so we see what he is saying to us in the word. And then we seek to know what is the application. Yes. How do we take the word and to walk it out in our lives. Amen. 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 And so we are going to go to Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 1. And our Bible study topic today is called the mind of Christ. Right. The mind of Christ. Amen. 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 Chapter 2, verse 1 in the King James Version, it reads, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Key verse, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. The Amen. mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let, let the Apostle Paul here, and the word let infers a command. Amen? Mm -hmm. Paul is giving us a command. He is telling us, like Nike, to just do it. Mm -hmm. He said to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So he's telling us that these same humility, characteristics of humility, Christ already demonstrated for us, right? And he's telling us that, as Christians, we ought to be like Christ. We ought to be Christ-like in our thinking. Well, years ago, there was a, a little slogan that says, what would Jesus do? Amen. And so tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about having the mind of Christ and letting this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to look at Luke 17 and 21 because there Jesus reminds us that the kingdom of God is within us. So we have to let the mind be in us. This is a reminder that the kingdom of God does not come with outward observation, right? It's not an outward observance, but rather it is an inner working that is not seen. And it's an inside job. Right? The mind is the area where God wants to work in our life. God wants to change our minds. Amen. 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 He wants us to have the mind of Christ, right? And so tonight, as we continue to study, our focus is going to be asking God to change our mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, having the mind of Christ is a lifelong process of developing the mind of Christ. You know, I don't care how long we've been saved, how long we've been serving, how long we've been sanctified. This is a continual process of developing the mind of Christ. Amen. Each day we commit to the work of letting this mm -hmm. mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So we, we, we got to work on this thing daily. Mm -hmm. None of us have arrived. None of us have this thing down. But every single day, we have to be purposeful in letting this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Paul tells us that the only mind that we are to seek after is the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Not our own minds. Not our own intellect. Not our own reasoning, not even that of others, but the mind of Christ. Amen. Too often we spend too much time seeking other people's minds, other people's thoughts, other people's beliefs. But if we learn to seek after the mind of Christ, we cannot go wrong. Amen? Amen. Because here's the deal. When we, when we follow after our own mind, the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 12 that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. 
Our minds can make us think that we're right and we can be dead wrong. Amen. Our minds will have us thinking that we're inside of the will of God, but we are yet operating outside of the will of God. Mm -hmm. So each day we have to purpose to have the mind of Christ. Amen. 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 So somebody said, so what is the mind of Christ, right? Because we came here today to learn, to learn how we can develop the mind of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to have a Christ-like thinking in all of our acts, all of our thoughts, our attitudes, and to have his same characteristics in our thinking? What does it mean? So I found out as I began to dig a little deeper in the Word that in the New Testament, six times there are uh, scriptures that describe or implies what a Christ-like mind is. Amen. So we're going to learn today what a Christ-like mind is because that's really what being a Christian is all about. Mm -hmm. Christian mm -hmm. like Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we're thinking in a way that will produce Christ-like living and a Christ-like lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's the mind of Christ. So if you would, turn with me. I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures. And because we're at Bible study, right? We want to be in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, you can write these down and go back and read them at your leisure. We're going to go to Romans 8 and 6. Six things in the New Testament that describes or implies what the mind of Christ is like. It says in Romans 8 and 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the first characteristic we see about the mind of Christ is that our mind is alive. It is alive. It is life unto us. Amen? Amen. But because to be carnally minded, right, that's to go after our flesh, right, that's death. Uh, so what is it to be carnal? What is carnality? Dr. Tony Evans defines it as carnality is the state where the person has the mindset of seeking to gratify themselves rather than to please God. So we hear the Apostle Paul here, he's telling us how to have the mind of Christ. So to have the mind of Christ, we must be spiritually minded. Amen. 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 When we are spiritually minded, to have a spiritual mind brings life and it brings peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. When we operate with a mindset that is carnal, when a mindset that is contrary to the word of God, then we're operating in a carnal mindset, right? Those are the things of our fleshly desires. Those are things that appeal and appease our appetites. Those are things that we give into our sinful nature, right? Because here's the thing. We all fall short. Nobody's perfect, right? So we're all going to trip and stumble and make some mistakes along the way. But a carnal mindset is a lifestyle. It is a constant living according to the appetites of the flesh. And so we can't have a mind of Christ giving in to those proclivities. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 2 and 1 says that without Christ, we are dead. We are dead. But John 3 and 36 says, in Christ, we have everlasting life. In Christ, we have everlasting life. So the mind of Christ is alive to the spirit. It is life. In fact, Jesus says in John 10 and 10, he says, I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So in Christ, we not only have life, but we have life. When we have the mind of Christ, we have the abundant life. Our life is overflowing. We, we, have, we have more than enough um, uh, peace in our mind because it brings life and it brings peace. That word let there says it means for us to set, for us to set our minds, for us to fix our minds, for us to put our minds in position to be deliberate, to set our minds on the spirit. When we do that, we live. Amen? Amen. The second thing that we see about um, the mind of Christ is that the mind of Christ is single-minded. So the mind of Christ, when we have the mind of Christ, we have life. It is alive. Then secondly, it is single-minded. Go to, if you would for me, um, let's see here. Go to, I believe... 
Oh, Jesus, I'm afraid. I believe it is. Go to 2 Corinthians for me. Uh, chapter 11, verse number 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 3. And I am going to read that today out of, I believe I'm going to read that out of the NASB version. Amen. I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians. We're still talking about the mind of Christ, developing the mind of Christ. Amen. Here we go, 2 Corinthians, and we are at for chapter number 11, verse number 3, and I am going to read that out of the NASB version. All right, it says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Your mind will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion from Christ. Amen. He says that our minds will be led away. In today's society, there are many things that are battling for residence and precedence in our minds. Our minds are distracted and discombobulated. We are easily defocused and easily distracted. We can easily get caught up thinking about the wrong thing, right? It takes discipline in order for us to have to be single-minded. And if we're not careful, the enemy will lead us astray to have us thinking on wrong things, right? Uh, and so it talks about being disciplined. It takes an intentional effort for us to have the mind of Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So the mind of Christ, it is alive. It is single-minded. Amen. It is lowly. Lowly. Philippians 2 and 3. It says, letting nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each other esteem other better than themselves. Mm, our mind is to be lowly. Humility and lowly go hand in hand. Humility follows lowliness of mind. Humility speaks of our relationship to others and to God, and lowliness is a state of mind. How many people know that sometimes we can be too high-minded? We can be too high-minded. The scripture tells us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, right? Because the, the, the word of God knows that we can get in a place where we can begin to think too high of ourselves. And it says we will be doing things for vain glory. What's vain glory? Out of excessive pride over one's own achievements mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. ability. It is a way that a person kind of props themselves up and kind of pats mercy. themselves mm -hmm. on the back, right? Mm -hmm. A person who operates in vain glory is a, is a quality possessed by people who are conceited, boastful, and full of themselves. Mm -hmm. Those people don't have a lowly mindset. Amen? And when we get get to have a proper view of God's greatness, mm -hmm. my God, right. it's easy for us mm -hmm. to have a proper view of ourselves. Amen? Because we know no matter what we achieve, no matter what skill set we operate out of, without God, we're nothing. Mm -hmm. Without God, we can do nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no reason for us to try to have some type of glory to take God's glory because it's all vanity. It's all in vain because all glory belongs to God. Amen. Any good thing that we do is simply because God empowered us to do it. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so we don't want to do anything high minded we want to remain and have a lowly mindset. We want to operate in the spirit of humility. We want to esteem other people better than we esteem ourselves. Now listen, I'm not talking about feeling insecure or inferior, right? But it means we're supposed to consider, consider other people, Amen. right? Think of other people. Be, be conscious of other people and not be those that always think about ourselves. Mm. Amen? Mm. We're not supposed to do anything, it says, through strife. 
Mm -hmm. Anger, bitter, mm -hmm. disagreements, and conflicts. Those are not to be named for people who have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. Because when we have the mind of Christ, the scripture says, pursue peace with all men. Mm -hmm. Right? When we have the mind of Christ, it is our desire to be at peace with everybody. Amen. Amen? We look for opportunities to make peace. Right? And the scripture even tells us that we should lead the way. We should be the ones that go to our brother mm -hmm. and to try to be reconciled unto them. And we can only do that when we have a lowliness of mind. Because if we get too high minded and too haughty and too arrogant, I don't think I'm not supposed to apologize to her. I'm not supposed to go to him. I didn't do nothing to him. I didn't do anything to him. He should come to me. Mm -hmm. But when we have a lowliness of mind, amen, we look at ourselves in light of who God is, it makes us do the right thing. Amen. 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 The fourth characteristic that we find in the Bible that describes the mindset of Christ or the mind of Christ is pure. Pure. Go to Titus 1 and 15 for me. It says, unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Amen. Our minds can become <clears throat> defiled by the things that we partake in, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's easy. It's easy for our minds to become impure. We don't even have to be trying to. You know, uh, sometimes I, 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 in times past, I've been on YouTube, right? And all of a sudden, while I'm watching one thing on YouTube, something else will pop up. And I'd be like, Lord, where'd that come from? You know, sometimes things just, kind of, in this world, things, we're just exposed to things that are not pure. You know, it used to be when we watched TV that uh, things that were rated R or things that had a lot high sex content or high nudity or lots of cuss words, those things came on after 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we used to have to wait till it got dark, right? <laughs> but now... Even on regular network, at 5, 6, 7 o'clock at night, on any given station, on any given moment, you're liable to see something that is not pure, right? Amen. And so being pure uh, is a state of mind. It's the ideal state for us, but it's something we have to work on. Amen. We have to work on that every single day because there is a constant barrage of impurity everywhere we go. Uh, the world is just full of stuff, and so we have to work overtime to keep our minds pure. Amen. We have to be intentional. We have to set our eyes and our minds on things because if not, we will be driven into a mindset that will lead us into impure actions that do not please God. Mercy. Mercy. Amen. And we want to please God because yes, we're Christians, yes, right? Yes, we want to be Christ-like, right? Amen. And so to do so, we have to have a mind that is alive, a mind that is single-minded on the things of God. We have to have a spirit that is lowly in spirit and not think we so much and, you know, have a try to think on pure thoughts and engage in things that will help our mindset to remain pure and untainted with the things of this world. And mm -hmm. then... Our minds need to be responsive. We need to be able to respond to the word of God. There is a mind that responds to the word of God because it is open to the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's look at Luke 24, verse 45, and I'm going to read it in the NASB version. Listen, we our minds have to be open. So many times you'll hear preachers and we get ready to preach, we'll pray, Lord, open the hearts and the minds of the people. Because if our minds are blocked, if our minds are stopped, no matter how much good preaching it is, how much good teaching it is, if we're not open to receive what God has for us, mm. now we don't get very far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Luke 24 and 45. He says, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He opened their minds. And a Christ-like mind is one that is responsive to the word of God. Amen. The Christ-like mind moves us from being hearers of the word, but responding to the word by becoming doers of the word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because our minds are open. Uh, uh, another scripture says their minds were blinded. Do you know that our minds can be blinded? 
that we can be so locked in our thinking that we can hear the truth of the word of God. And if we're not open, we can't even receive. Amen. 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 And so we, we want to talk about, so how, how do you, we cultivate a sensitivity, an attentiveness to the word of God? Sister Kelly, how do I develop a mind that is responsive to the word of God? Well, one way is to spend time in the Word. Mm -hmm. And we talk about spend time. You know, we all these days get these daily devotionals or daily scriptures right, right. that pop up on our phone mm -hmm. early in the morning. And we'll browse through them or rush through them real quick. Well, that's not spending time in the Word. Mm -hmm. That's reading a scripture. Amen. But when we spend time in the word, when we ask God to open up our mind, to open up our understanding so that we can understand the word of God, when we spend time in the word, God will help us to understand it. You know, so many times people say, well, you know, I don't read my Bible because I don't understand it. I promise you. If you pray and you ask God to open up your understanding mm. and you take your time and you read through it, God will begin to give you understanding. Amen. And your understanding will open up more and more. He says if you seek after him, we'll find him. If we hunger for him, we will be filled. God is not going to have us have a hunger and a thirst for the word, for the word and he leave us empty. Amen. 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 So we have to develop a mind that is responsive to the word. Amen. Amen. And then the last thing, the last characteristic of a mind that is a Christ-like mind, a mind of Christ, is a mind that has peace. A mind that has peace. Mm -hmm. Listen, even in that same scripture in Romans 8 and 6, it says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Mm -hmm. And peace. When we have the mind of Christ, amen, we have peace. The spiritual mind is peaceful. Now, does that mean we have peace all the time? Absolutely not. But what it does mean is that when we find ourselves outside of peace, right, when we have chaos and confusion, because the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion, right? Amen. So whenever our minds are full of chaos and, and confusion, we have probably taken our mind off God. Yeah. We have yeah. taken our minds off the things of God, the word of God. So in those moments that we find that our peace has been disrupted, it, uh, when our, we let our minds minds drift. We let our minds become distracted and our minds become de derailed from the things of God. That means we're in the flesh probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is then that we must let, let our minds. We must set our minds. We must fix our minds. We must position our minds. And sometimes we even have to reposition our minds. Amen. And so our job is uh, setting our mind, and it's God's job to provide the peace. Amen? He is Jehovah Shalom and the, the God of peace. The Bible says if we keep our mind stayed on him, that he will give us peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. People don't understand how during this world pandemic and during this civil unrest and all the political contentions that we have going on, how the people of God can still have peace. Why? Because our mind is set on things above and not things of this world. Amen. Our mind is set on the God that is sovereign. Our mind is set on the things of God. Amen. And when you have that type of mindset, when your trust is in God, when your hope is in God, amen, amen. you can have peace. Amen. 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 And so we want to develop the mind of Christ. And you know what? I said this earlier that I don't care how long we've been saved, you know, we have to work on this thing daily because mm -hmm. every day it's a new problem. Every day it's a new challenge, mm -hmm. it's a new bill, a new situation, a new occurrence, something that comes to attack us in our mind. The, the battle is in the mind, right? Amen. When the enemy can get us thinking that God's not with us, thinking that God has forsaken us, that God doesn't care about us, mm -hmm. then he can get us to abandon the things of God. Mercy. Amen? Amen. And so it's not that he can do anything, but he gets in our mind. He tells us God's not listening to us. God has not heard us. Amen? And so we have to guard our minds to make sure that we have the mind of Christ. Amen. 
So as we get ready to conclude this lesson tonight, we want to let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. It takes work. And it takes time to develop the mind of Christ. Sometimes we have to reset our minds over and over again, right? right. And so here's this week's application. This week as we go about um, our daily activities, let's set our minds on Christ. Amen. Let's be intentional this week mm -hmm. to focus on the word of God. Amen? Let's renew our minds. Right? Sometimes our mind gets kind of caught up and we drift away. But let's renew our mind. The scripture tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, changed, right? Yeah. By the renewing of our minds. So daily, let's ask God to renew our minds. Yeah. Let yeah. that be part of our prayer. God, mm -hmm. renew my mind. Yes. God, yes. give me a mind like yours so I can think the things that you think, oh God, yes. that my thoughts would be pleasing unto you mm -hmm. and then my actions will be pleasing unto you, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we need to do this week is to gird our minds. Mm -hmm. To gird and to guard our minds, to pull mm -hmm. ourselves together, mm -hmm. to pull ourselves back in. You know, it's easy to stray, but this could be the perfect week when you make a decision. You know what? I'm just not going to be on Facebook all day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take me 10 minutes every day and I'm going to get in this word. I'm going to take me an extra five minutes and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pull my mind back together. Yes, I'm going to yes. get my peace back. I'm going to focus on the things of God. Amen. And I'm going to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to develop my mind Amen. so that I think like Christ. Amen. Amen. And when we do these things, we'll find that we begin more and more to imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. We'll be engaging in the mental process of telling our minds what to do, right? And in doing so, we'll begin to obey the scriptures and to become more like Christ. Amen. 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 We bless God for this Bible study tonight. You know, uh, so many times we hear the word. I know we've heard the scripture probably a thousand times over and over again, but it's not until we start putting the word of God into action do we begin to see the full benefits of it. And so we thank God today that it's going to be our intention this day forward and moving forward to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We just bless God for those of you that are watching with us. We pray if there is one that um, has not accepted Jesus Christ. We want to offer Jesus Christ to you. Amen. We want to ask you to come on into the family of God. Amen. We talked about today having peace. Mm -hmm. There's peace in relationship with Jesus Christ. You can look forward to life, eternal life with him. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you come on into the family of Christ, and I don't know if you're out there, you're listening, wherever you may be, it's real easy. All you have to do is just repent of your sins. Just ask God to forgive you for your sin, to tell him that you accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. Amen. 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 We're going to pray a prayer real quick for Amen. those of us that um, are in this Bible study and even for the one that we believe by faith will turn their lives over to God. Father God, we thank you today, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you for this word, oh God. God, help us to be those that meditate on your word day and night, oh God, that we might not sin against it, oh God. God, help us to walk in the things of the Spirit and not after our flesh, oh God. God, help us, oh God, not to think more highly of ourselves, oh God, but to have lowliness in spirit, oh God. God, help us not to be those that strive with one another, oh God. Help us, oh God, to do nothing for vain glory, oh God. God, keep our minds on things that are pure, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, help us to respond to this word word, oh God, by being doers of this holy word. Yes. God, we pray for the ones that would be listening today that yes. would turn their lives over to you, oh God. Mm -hmm. We ask you to come into their lives, oh God, mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. We ask you, oh God, to bring them in, oh God, and to fill them, oh God, and to raise them up in the things of God, that they would be led to a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, yes. oh yes. God, that they would be discipled, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. God, we thank you for every person person that is listening to this broadcast, oh God, and we yes. pray that they will be doers of this word yes. and that they will become those that have the mind of Christ. We thank you in amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. 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 amen.
All right, we thank you for being with us again for Wednesday in the Word. And so remember our announcements. If you are able to make a donation on Saturday, September 21st, we will be here uh, from 12 to 5. God bless you and have a wonderful day.